Okay, so welcome back to part 12. So as promised, I'm going to quickly go through how to program the form and get it to send an email to a certain email address. So before we do that, we need to download some software first of all. So you need to go to postcastserver.com forward slash download. And then you need to download the Postcast Server Professional Trial. It's a 14-day trial. Uh, and then once you've got that, you will then have the following this file here. So if you double click that and if we just quickly go through the installation, so basically click next, agree to the terms, leave the default location, pretty much keep clicking next until it's finished. Okay so once it's finished literally click on the finish button and then that's now the software is installed. So we'll come back to that bit later. So if we open up Visual Web Developer and we're on our default page here. So if we just go to the contact page uh, and just before we start with it, what I want to do, the, co the comments uh, box here, we need to change this from a single line to a multiple line, a multi-line. So if we click on the, the, the box in the graphical view and come over to the properties down here in the bottom right hand corner and then just move all the way down until you find text mode it says single line so if I now change that to multi line if you watch the highlighted box it will change and now you can see we've got a slider bar on the right hand side which now means it's a multi line so that's that bit sorted okay so the first thing we're going to do for the the form is if I just quickly go through here if we go over to the solution explorer and we've got contact default login and and so on if I click the little arrow next to the contact form you'll notice that it shows another file underneath now this file here is called a code behind file so this is where we write all of our programming code and every page has got one so default's got one login and so on and so forth so we want to be uh, putting our programming code into this contact one here so if I double click that as you can see it opens up a brand new, a new page with some new code that we've, we've not actually gone into yet because this code behind file is going to be dealing with email we need to add in a line here So now this file knows that it has to it's going to be dealing with mail, so we've added that in there. So then the next thing we're going to do is if we remove this code here, and then if we just quickly go back to our contact form, so we want an event to happen when uh, we click on this submit button. So basically we want to send the form. So if we double click this submit button, it now jumps us straight to the code behind file and it creates this event for us here. So what we need to do is we need to put our code where the cursor is in between these two uh, curly brackets. So what I'm going to do to save a bit of time is actually copy and paste the code in. So if I now paste that in here, don't worry, I'll, I'll make the code available um, in the description of the video. So here we're using mail message. Uh, we're having a from field, so we can put in the email address of where it's coming from, the where it's going to, the subject of the email. This here is just saying that the format of the email is going to be HTML. And then this section here is what's going to be included in the body of the email. Now if you look here where it says TXT first name, if we go back to our contact form, and if we click on the field that we created here, and you notice we gave it TXT first name as well, that's how it knows which fields to pick up when it sends in the email. So TXT first name, and then for the last name, it's txt surname. So if we go back to our contact form, and if we look, that's txt surname as well. And if we just come along slightly, so phone number is txt phone number, txt phone number. And then we've got for the email, it's txt email. So if we just check that one as well, and again, that is txt email. And then the final one is txt comments. And if we just check that field, and again that is txt comments. Okay, so we just go back to the code behind. And the section we need to look at next. So where it says PC name here, this is where you need to put your PC name in. Now if you don't know what that is, I'll show you how to find that out. So what you'll need to do is open up a command prompt. So if you're using Windows, if you hold down the Windows key and press the R, 
that will open the run dialog box so in here if you type CMD and click on OK and then that opens up a command prompt so all you need to do here is just type in the word host name and press enter and then as you can see it gives you the name underneath so mine's called home PC so if I just remove if I just close this box so in here I would actually put home PC like that okay so if we just go back to the software we installed to start with so if you just open that up and if you go to the setup wizard so if we click next so if you just leave it on I am directly connected to the internet and click next it will detect the network parameters okay and then just select the the first option local area network okay so the internet IP address if you just put that to your IP address so again if you don't know what that is you can do it this way if again if you hold down the Windows key and press R and then in here if you leave if you type CMD and click OK and then you want to type in IP config and press enter and then you want to look for your Ethernet, if you're connected via a cable, look for the Ethernet adapter and it tells you your IP address here, so mine's 192.168.100.2 obviously if you're using wireless, look for the wireless connection okay, so once you've done that, click next click next again click next again and then once you get to this screen here, what you need to do is putting the SMTP server address of your ISP so for instance, I use TalkTalk Talk here in the UK, so to connect to them it would be smtp.talktalk.net and that's on port 25 and then click on next and then what you can do to see if your ISP are blocking port 25 is click on this here and as it says mine doesn't block it, so click OK click next and then click finish OK, so once you've done that, if we just move this to the side if we bring back up Visual Web Developer Okay, if we go back to our contact form here, and then if we load up the site, okay, so here it is. And now, if we move this down, so if we type in here, put in the details like that, and click on submit okay so that's now gone so if we now bring in that software from the side and as you'll see now there's an email in the outbox so now what this is going to do is this is now going to forward it to our or to my uh, ISP who's then going to forward it to my Gmail account so if I now click on the email and click start okay and as you can see that's now gone so if I now just jump over to, to Gmail and as you can see here the email has now arrived with the information that we actually put in the form okay so I just want to uh, briefly explain the process of what just happened um, so that bit of software we installed on the PC creates a local uh, SMTP server so SMTP server send out email so we installed that on the PC and then we told the the website to set that we told the website that was the SMTP server so if I just minimize this and do stop debugging so if we go to our code behind file so if you look here it says SMTP server and we put in the name of our PC if I just pull up that bit of software again okay so if we just go into the settings okay so if you look here in the settings and you'll see SMTP server and the host name actually says home PC so that's how it knows um, where to send it to and it sends the email goes on port 25 okay so once the email comes into here as you see it's sitting here in the outbox uh, I'm then telling it to send the email to my ISP uh, and then they forward it on to my Gmail account because this software can't email it directly because Google rejects it 
Um, so this is just for testing on your PC. Uh, if you were to put this site live uh, on the internet on a server, you would do the following. In here for SMTP server, you would change that to localhost. So when you FTP the files up to the server, um, it looks for the SMTP server locally on that server. So you use the word localhost. So as I was saying, this is just for testing um, locally on your PC. So when we come to make this site live uh, on the server, we'll change this to localhost and it will send out email without having to go to my ISP and then to Google. It will go direct to where it needs to go to. Okay, so there's just one more thing I want to show you. So if I go back to the contact form and if we start debugging, I just want to show you one thing. If we just put some information in here, it could be anything for now. And then if I hit submit, you notice the page just comes straight back to what it looks like when we first input the information. It doesn't look like the email has been sent. What we can do is we can create a page to say that the information has gone through. So if we just come out of this, just minimize that. And if we do stop debugging. So what we're going to do, if we create a new page, So it's going to be a web form and we're going to call this email confirmation and then we're going to select a master page. So we'll just select the master page as normal. Okay, so if we now preview that, obviously we've got all of our page structure. So in here we're going to uh, put a bit of feedback for the user. So if we just go to the contact form and grab all of this so from the main content area all the way down to the closing main content area and just paste it back into the email confirmation and then if we just remove the the form so if we just remove all that content there so we've now got our main left and main right again so if we just go back to the design view so we've got two divs, a left and a right. So just to quickly do this, so if I just paste into here the following, so it's a paragraph tag, thank you for your email, we will attend to your request as soon as possible. If we just preview that in design, you can now see the text is there. So if we just save that and then go back to our contact.aspx.cs, so the code behind file, and then we're going to add in one more line, which is going to be the following. So response.redirect, so once the form has been sent, it's going to redirect now to this email-confirmation ASPX page. So if we save that, and then if we preview that in a browser. Okay, so this time, if we just add in any text for now, and hit submit, you can now see the page is redirected, so we've gone to email confirmation, and it now says here, uh, thank you for your email, we will attend to your request as soon as possible. Okay, so now we should have two emails waiting um, in, on our SMTP server, the software we installed. So if we just open that up, and as you can see there, I've got two emails waiting. Uh, so it's going to my Gmail account with the subject information request. So if we select both of them and hit start, that will now start to send out the email um, from here to my ISP, which will then in turn forward that to my Gmail account. And as you can see there, they're just going through. One's gone through. And they've both gone through. So if I now just jump back over to my Gmail, and as you can see there, the both emails have come through. So I'm going to leave the video at that for now and then I'll upload another one shortly. Again, so thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and welcome to all the new subscribers, by the way. Really appreciate everyone clicking that button and I'll catch you in the next video.